<sighs> we're back. We're back. Welcome Another back. Month. Another month of the year, eighth month of the year, four more months to go to 2022. But that's for another time. We're focused on the present day and it is August 6th, the first present day, Friday. Present day, present month. And uh, of the month. Yeah. And well, I'm going to say, and present <laughs> birth month. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Joe tends to go like a total 180, you know, one, one day he'll be excited about something and then the next day he'll be like, won't care. I don't do half stuff and half measure. I always do a full circle. I 360 it. <laughs> All right. So August 6th, let's see what's happening on this day. Okay. For today's observances, we have whew, your breast mouse here. Do you no. brush your teeth this morning? Yes, always do. You got to always do every yes. after meal if you can. Yeah, so it's National Fresh Breath Day, and you know, you know what causes like the smelly breath? Uh, bacteria. Yeah, very good bacteria. Bacteria eat food, right? You know, these little critters they crawl in the little crevice of your mouth and just make a lot of stinky gases. Mm -hmm. And the stinky gases, boom! It it's not very very pleasant. Not very pleasant. Yeah. But sometimes uh, the smell can you know resonate. I mean, not resonate. Uh, What's can come from your uh, tummy? Yes, from your stomach. Because mm. like uh, one thing that I usually eat, I can smell like for like hours is hot dog. Oh, if yeah, I, yeah, if, yeah. If, if you eat a hot dog, right? Even though I brush my teeth and stuff like that, it still comes out. Especially if you burp. Yeah. Yeah, especially if you burp to mm -hmm. the, uh, the, yeah, I think the gas. <laughs> Speaking of burping. I'm getting yeah, burp right now. I just had my bagel. So uh, besides um, so besides bacteria, right? Uh, it can be also cause of chemicals, the food, the chemicals, food you yeah. eat, and uh, yeah, generally chemicals. Give me, give me a food that. Or if you're not, if you if you don't, or if you haven't eaten anything at all, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. There you go. Because your mouth get dry and you know, bacteria. Mm -hmm. But uh, what food do you eat that usually lingers in your mouth? Oh, smell? definitely garlic. Anything garlic. with garlic. That's a strong. Uh, I, well, Fish sauce. Yeah, I would even consider garlic to be like smelly or you know like smells bad because i like the smell of garlic you know but it's, it's the thing is it's strong it's pungent it, yes yes it's there you strong. go strong yeah and but compared to fish sauce i mean come on i don't like fish sauce so the thing is you can still taste the fish sauce too you know what they say sometimes if you can smell it you can taste it uh, maybe it's that or not really yes you can too the thing is, uh, another thing is, yeah, that's true, because you're you're tasting the molecule, you're smelling the molecule. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, another thing is, uh, what do you call it? Uh, our our fish sauce, right? We put garlic in it too, so it's a double whammy. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah, I was picked on when I was a little kid because like the dinner I had like fish sauce. Oh, and, sorry. And in the morning, my mouth still smell, and the little girls are like, ew. And that that's the spite that you like uh, use mouthwash, brush your brush your teeth. Yeah, see, you do it. It just sticks in there. I don't know for whatever reason. But National Fresh Breath Day. Uh, just besides brushing teeth, you can use mouthwash, mm -hmm. gargle it, and also flossing because you know flossing the important. The food, the food in your teeth can still be a food source for the bacteria, and they eat it, they grow, and they make a lot of bad smell. Mm -hmm. And also rot your teeth too. So you gotta be careful. No, well, since we're talking about fresh breath, uh, the main um, item that is involved with that is a toothbrush, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, what would you, what, what, what can you say about the difference between the electric toothbrush and the manual toothbrush? I mean, aside from you know uh, being electric, of course. Uh, would you say toothbrush. the electric toothbrush is more effective because, you know, like it vibrates? uh so differently well first of all the manual toothbrush doesn't vibrate but the vibration that it it offers helps you uh brush your teeth better i to be honest i had a phase what kind of toothbrush do you use so i used to use an electric toothbrush i was just okay. standing there and just hold it in my mouth just move it around right mm -hmm. uh i didn't feel clean you it's, don't feel clean no okay well, it might be clean, but I don't feel clean itself because I like using a regular toothbrush. Mm -hmm. So I can actually go in the crevice and actually really work it with myself. Well, my dentists always say if you're using um, an electric toothbrush, you're not supposed to be using it the same as the manual where you brush brush your teeth using that. You're supposed to stay at one place for no, quite yes. some time. Yeah, you and hold you it let, against it and just like... Yeah, you let the vibration or the uh, the shaking of the electric toothbrush but do the thing. I feel like it's not enough. So I use That's a true. manual toothbrush. And yeah. So that um, it's National Fresh Breath Day. 
be, uh, be wary what you eat and remember to keep your mouth. Something we haven't mentioned that's hygiene. Too. I guess one thing that could help you fresh your breath, uh, mints. Yeah, mints, yeah. mints is usually. Uh, In case of emergency, like you don't have time to actually brush your teeth, you know, after your meal. Yeah. Okay. But besides that, moving on to another observance that we have is national, well, it's not national, just Farm Worker Appreciation Day. And international, probably, or probably. around probably. the world. There's always yeah. farm workers everywhere. To this day, even though we're modernized, right? We have big cities, electronic stuff like that. We still need farm workers because that's how we get our food. Yes. Right. So, where will we be without our produce? We, as a society, right? As a civilization, right? Mm -hmm. We grew as an agricultural uh civilization we were most of our cities are built near the river so we can utilize the river water to grow our crops and plants to feed our growing population right right so nowadays we still have farms we, we heavily dependent on farms and you know it's time to appreciate these hard workers they spend hours on days outside in the hot sun providing us food we definitely have to appreciate farm yeah. workers but some some uh, someone who is not being appreciated that much that is considered a farm worker are the water buffalo, especially in oh the Asian countries. Gosh. Because well, why? Because why? <laughs> they are farm workers. <laughs> they are too. Right? Yes. I mean, especially for those countries the, who can't afford machineries. The uh, to, farm animals. Yes. The farm they animals. Definitely. Yeah. They. Because you just wrapped it because like uh, the so, national animal of the country that we're traveling this week is the water buffalo. Yes. Speaking, <laughs> of, speaking of that. Uh, my family is, uh, we're, we have a strong background in farming. Oh, that's we cool. We actually do have a farm. Do you know, do you know farming? Yeah. No, I do. Okay, it's cool. No, I do. I literally do. Because like when I was growing up with my grandfather, he taught me how to do some gardening. That's cool. And some uh, plowing and some burying some stuff, you know, making little trenches and making, I, uh, you know, ir irrigating it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, just like Come what on. you guys are seeing in the picture right now, how they're how the land is formed, you know, for their uh, for their crops. Yeah, farmer right at there. heart, you know. That's cool. Far <laughs> farmer, farmer boys. Farmer, yeah, farmer uh, Johns. My, <laughs> farmer John, my brother's name is John, so we call him. Oh, farmer there you go, John. Farmer John. <laughs> so, do you have your family that have like a farming background? Unfortunately, no. no? Um, but uh, farming was. Uh, you could say farming was uh, one of the subjects that we learned back in uh, grade school mm -hmm. in our country, uh, together with other life skills like stitching and. Uh, uh, washing clothes. Yes. My dad was like, he, I think he, he grew up on a, in a village, so mm -hmm. he has, you know, how to do farming. So. Uh, even though you guys are seeing this kind of farming right here, uh, we I think we already talked about it in one of our Zooms. Because of the help of technology, we are able to actually do uh, other kinds of farming, like vertical farming. Yeah, uh, exponential, which, yeah. Yeah, which kind of sounds uh silly and kind of impossible but because you need you need the floor right or you need the floor you need the the ground wow, the dirt yeah, yeah the dirt you know hey with technology anything is possible exactly you put your mind to it so thank you to science too for, thank you for farmers for giving us the nice food that we have on our table so that's why you eat your vegetables okay yeah uh, you should be saying that to yourself <laughs> you're i one. do Thank yeah. you to the broccoli farmers. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought you don't eat veggie. Anymore. And cauliflower farmers. Oh, yeah. You eat Not a lot carrots. Of Sorry. You don't like carrots? No, I don't like oh carrots. Oh, my gosh. There's nothing better than carrots and... Broccoli? Know, Come on. Carrots and ranch. But, you know... If, oh, like like um, raw carrots? Yeah. Oh, no, I can't. I'm not Bugs Bunny. Sorry. Wow. Carrots is, like, really good. I, I know it's good. I just said I can't, you know, I'm just oh, like, I can't juice. eat it. No, not not carrot juice either. How many fingers am I holding up? Three. Okay, good. So, you know what? That's a what do you call this? A myth. That that's my uh, that's a bad way for me to justify that I don't eat carrots because my eyesight is so good. Like I keep saying, well, why do I why do I need carrots? My eyesight is good. <laughs> but that shouldn't be it, you know. <laughs> Dude, there's there's gonna be a time where your eye will just deteriorate, and you should probably said, I right. should have eaten carrots, son. J junior, junior. <laughs> no, you know what? My sister's carrots. wearing glasses. Uh -huh. My brother's wearing glasses. They both eat carrots. So maybe there's no correlation to that. Then. Well, maybe not. But what I'm saying is, like, my eyes are getting weaker at some point too, or I'm feeling it now. But it's not getting blurry. It's more like I get tired of looking at the screen. Uh, uh, fatigue. Yeah, uh -huh. it's the eye fatigue. Yeah. So, so you know, I guess I'm just thankful my eyesight is still good. August is my favorite month, and mm -hmm. this next observance is my favorite. Tree. 
It is National Root Beer. Oh Float Day. yeah! I love root beer float. There's there we nothing. go. Did we just talk about it like last week? Uh, that because was of ice cream and yeah, stuff. Because of yeah, because ice cream. But no okay. ice cream. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So, root beer float is like one of my favorite treats yeah. of all time. Tell me about it. I'm try. I, uh, I'm trying to find places where I can like order it to our Dude, place. Why order it if we can just like make it? Go get some A and W because I think A and W is the most famous root beer to use. Oh well, yeah. And but, vanilla ice cream. That's it. The thing is, I don't want to buy it because then I'll. You know. Well, for me, I'm okay with making it instead of me looking for a place no, to. No, I can make it, but then I'll be making it every day and. <laughs> oh I'll, well, yes. <laughs> oh yeah, see, definitely. See what I mean? If it's not. Out of sight, discipline. Out of sight, out of mind. If it's not in my fridge, I don't. I'm not gonna make it, and I'm gonna be good with my, you know, health. Makes sense. But, Makes sense. Man, I don't know what about it, but I just love root beer flow. It's something about considering you don't like too much sweet. I don't. Like but sweets. this one is like, you know, yeah, so sweet. You got the soda. You got the ice cream. Yeah. So. Root beer is my favorite soda. But French vanilla ice cream is like favorite favorite ice cream flavor. So when you combine it too, it's like match made in heaven. Like literally. I can't go wrong with this. Well, I can't go wrong if I drink too much of it, really. <laughs> we should ask Ian about his theory because you know how, like, if you're adding sweet to another sweet, it should make you feel, ah, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you get tired of uh, too much sweetness, right? But root beer flow, I'm okay with it. Sorry, I'm okay with it. It's really good, too. It's. I don't and I'm a sweet too. You know, I mean, J Joe, sh you guys should be wondering why Joe would love this one because yeah, I don't I like sweet that much. You guys already told, uh, I already told you guys, I'm already sweet too. You're not. Yeah. I am. Joe's not. Total opposite of me, but he likes this. I like this. It's weird, and I bet you some of you guys like this too. So you know, put in the comments, and you know, when we're <laughs> we'll probably make it here. We can make it here. It's not that bad. Summertime. Summer yeah, treat. I guess it's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. for fair, you know, it's a good treat. Movie. Especially if your straw oh, is a wafer. Oh wait, not oh, wafer. Oh yeah, that's oh it true. is a wafer. Yeah, yeah, that's so cool. So oh, that's it's so like anything that's in, too in much. the glass. That's a little bit too much for me. <laughs> anything in the glass is just edible and drinkable. The whole glass is edible. Too. <laughs> you know they can make it like sugar glass, like you see in the movies. Oh come on! No, in the movies, yeah, I know, but it... that's gonna be too much. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but I don't think it will work because the, the sugar would probably dissolve. Anyways, moving on on August sixth on today history, we have two thousand twelve. NASA curiosity. That looks, that looks like Wall-E. I'm pretty sure he was like inspiration for it. Okay. I don't know. So NASA, NASA Curiosity rover lands on the surface of Mars. So to this day, Curiosity is still operating. Over there. It is uh, nine years. It's been on Mars. It's awesome. It collects valuable data like soil composition, like what's in the soil, its atmosphere, the gases and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And also for search for the Martians. But you know what they say though, curiosity kills the cat. But luckily this guy, this guy is still alive. Yeah. And it's still working to the same, and you know, they send very, very valuable uh, information back to Earth. Well, technically, this rover is curiosity, so this rover is the one who killed the cat. Oh shoot. That's yeah, right. you know what I mean? So but it, it probably ran over some Martian cat. Could be. Or if there are no life forms, current life forms on Mars, then I guess... Uh, that's a good thing. Yeah. If curiosity hasn't, uh... you know, when you see these pictures, right? You see, oh, it's so small, so this cute. is so high def, though. By the way, this picture that you no, this is probably uh, rendered. Okay, come on. I mean, how is it gonna take a selfie on Mars? Exactly. I'm like, <laughs> wait, <laughs> it's, like, it's a computer render. It's like CGI. Uh, you know these little rover things, right? When you look at them, they look pretty cute. They look kind of small, right? Wally. Yeah, but no, they're actually like the size of an SUV. They're huge. Oh, they are. Yeah, wow. they're huge. It doesn't look like it on the picture. That's it doesn't do justice, right? That's what I'm saying. Like when you see these rovers, you think, oh, it's so cute. It's like a little uh, go kart. No. <laughs> Where did... These guys are very important. We're sending out on different planets, but I guess the only planet we're focused on right now is Mars because we want to, you know, colonize it, live on Mars. I mean, it, it was doable. We can't, as of now, we can't go well, land on uh, Venus. No, we can't. Because of the uh, atmosphere in there. No. Hot. Hottest planet. Uh, what's gonna what's solar what's the next uh, planet after Mars? It could be our target for in the future. I think it's yeah. one of the moons of like Jupiter or Saturn. It's not the gas giants, but it's probably one of the moons. But, oh yeah, I forgot yeah. gas giant. It's a gas There's giant. no way for us to land it. Yeah. So hey, curiosity is still uh, kicking it in Mars, bringing back valuable uh, information, and I. I feel like it should have found something by now in nine years, right? Uh, I so, guess that means there's really nothing much so, going on in there. Martians were, you know. Hey, maybe they're living underground. 
maybe they are. Curiosity. Be more curious and go underneath. Hey, we the call we call it dirt on Earth. You can't call it Earth. It's just dirt. Is it Mars? No, I mean we just call it dirt, right? No, but when you go outside, you grab some Earth. It's called dirt. But it's also called Earth. Well, yeah, yeah. So you grab some dirt on Mars. You call it Earth or Mars? Um, I guess. Grabbing some of the Mars. You're probably just gonna call it dirt. Got some in Mars general. in my pocket. <laughs> or Martian dirt. Martian rock. Does, do you even call it Martian dirt if you're on Mars? If you're on Mars, yeah. But if you're here on Earth and you get the dirt right. from Mars, then yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Wow, we're going very complex right here. <laughs> so, moving on to notable birth on August 6th is Mr. M. Night Shyamalan. Shamanamala. Oh, <laughs> Shamanamala. He was born in 1970. The Sixth uh, Sense. Sixth Sense. He has a movie that came out uh, two weeks ago. It's called Old. Mm -hmm. Old is an uh, adaptation from the book Sandcastle, where a family goes to this island resort mm -hmm. and the children were aging faster mm -hmm. than, than than expected, you know? Mm -hmm. than, uh, uh, Sixth Sense is a good one. It was, that was what Bruce Willis, right? Interesting thing about M. Night Shyamalan as a director is that he has this fluctuation of making something good and bad, good and bad. Like really good, really bad. and then something really bad, you know? Do you know he appears in his film? Yes, uh huh. Yeah, as a, what do you call it? Just a Cameo. minor character, pretty yeah. much, yeah. Uh, did he make that really great movie, um, Avatar? <laughs> Did you just say great movie? Come on, <laughs> there you go. I got it, I got it. It was, oh no, my but, gosh. You know, you had some hits. Oh wait, no, no, no. You had some miss. We, we should be calling it Avatar because the in, in the movie, um, see, Avatar the Avatar last bender, not the, the, the blue last people. airbender. I yeah, think it's, not the blue people yeah. in uh, James Cameron. The James that Cameron one. one is, yeah, actually. Good. And James Cameron is the one who, uh, who directed Titanic, right? Yes. Yeah, okay, there you go. Well, I think he used the money for Titanic to develop the technology to make it. Well, that's a different uh, director. We're yeah. talking about M. Night Shyamalan. M. Night Shyamalan. Um, Shyamalan. Um, Shyamalan, yeah. The, some, some few movies that he has. Split. Split, Mirror, or Glass, was it? Glass? Yeah, Glass, uh, Samuel Jackson, and Unbreakable. That's a trilogy. Yeah, there you go. Trilogy. Uh, what other movies that he made? Those were uh, good, actually, but some people didn't like it. But for me, I'm like, well, it's, it's okay. It's, it's a good, good super movie. Man. Yeah. I, I wouldn't consider it a Shyamalan bad. Because Shyamalan good, Shyamalan bad. Um, Lady in Water. I haven't seen it. I'm yeah. trying to think of other uh, M Night movies, uh, but he has a lot of movies. He does. He does. And he like I said, he's very interesting. Now. You know, like Sixth Sense was like what in the '90s. He's still making movies. But it seems like even though some of his movies are are negatively criticized, you know, he he never he never get upset with it. Yeah. You know, he just keeps on making movies. Got, so what is what the one love. thing that you can take away from his movie? What is it? The, the twist. There yeah. Go. There's always a twist. Like Sixth Sense, well, that's why there's a twist in it. Which I think makes it risky for a movie because uh, you need to, ha I mean, sometimes You have to twist. engage the audience good enough before you can, you know, turn it to 180. Yeah, uh-huh. Because the twist can make your movie really good and really also bad. really bad. It could go both ways. So that's like, like the double-edged sword right there. Like some people have this uh, certain expectation, right? The hero got to triumph. The hero got to mm -hmm. win, right? But you flip the script and make it a little bit bad, you just tank the whole movie. Okay. So it is it's a masterful um, way of directing if you can do it properly. Yeah. You know, People can do a twist in any movie and it can awfully turn it bad. Right. Right. Because the twist not only had to be unexpected, right? But it also has to be in the realm of expectation. Yes. It, uh, it can happen, but it's like 1% happen. No, there are some directors who actually can do double twist, if you know what I mean. Right. Like, uh, you were expecting a twist already, but that twist wasn't the one you're expecting. Right, right, right. And which is, it's kind of rare, but very interesting if no, they can pull it off. Because that, that means the writers are really good. They yes. sat down, yes. they see all these possibilities, all these different multiverses, and try, you know, prune these multiverses into one mm -hmm. Loki. Yeah, yeah, I'm Loki. <laughs> I'm going on Loki. Oh, come <laughs> on. Yeah, I wasn't paying attention. All right. So, happy just birthday saying, to Mr. M. Night Shyamalan. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm just saying, you know, in, in our universe, uh -huh. uh, just expect the unexpected. There you go. Boo, yeah, <laughs> boo. So this week, we're traveling to my home country. America, I mean Vietnam. Oh, there we go. We're going to Vietnam. Now yes. We too can have a lot of things to, uh, to tell us, Joe. I'm very excited. Yay. I was born in America. Dude, I'm you like, know how, how, how... I'm like so Americanized. You know how embarrassed I was doing my show? 
Why? Because I could. I I, you I were wasn't born there, so I, you have no excuse. No, no, no. My 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 show for this week. Oh, for this week. Not, not last week, Why? but I'm just saying the. Um, I feel so embarrassed in not being able to pronounce the words correctly. And even though I did my best, oh. I'm pretty sure I have it. So you're not gonna have that problem. Uh, <laughs> let's try. Let's All try. right. So yes, I am Vietnamese, but I was born in America. And you're American. I'm American. I'm very, <laughs> I'm very American. Nice. But you have a Vietnamese heritage. I do, and yeah. I do have some culture in the household. And I'm trying to remember some stuff that we do. Oh yeah. We have Lunar New Year. It's called Tet. It's basically um, we. Is that different from Chinese New Year? No, it's the same thing. Oh, okay. It's like the same thing. We had this little red envelope. We had to. Uh, oh, I miss getting that. We had to from greet. My we we greet. Linda. Yeah, from my Linda, Vietnamese people. We we greet our elders, and they give us a little red envelope that we open up that has fresh money. Dude, it's I don't care how much is inside as long as it's crispy. I'm okay. Yes. You know, <laughs> I'm like, yeah. oh, crispy money. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is. Uh, I am the oldest in the, of all my cousins. So you're the, supposed to be the one giving? No, okay. not yet. The, the, here's the rule. You only give when you're married, and I'm going to stay single until I keep getting that money. <laughs> I feel bad for you, Joe. <laughs> He's like, why, why is this uh, 40-year-old guy still getting uh, New Year's money? He's like, hey, I'm still single. By rules, I still get money. Oh, man, that's once a year only, though. Yes. <laughs> So we have a traditional dress. It's kind of it's called al yai. So it's like a okay. long dress, and yeah, I have a couple too. Mine's I have one that's like a. Uh, it's not like a dress. It's more like a. But does it look like formal? It looks very formal. Formal and traditional at the same time. Yes. Okay. It has it's black and it has a little gold dragon on it. It's pretty cool. Oh. I, I have a picture somewhere, but I don't know. Uh, that's I guess I have an year. idea, or what it, you know, a visual idea of what it looks like. But yeah, black and gold. Come on, that's like good color combination. A lot right of firecrackers on the New Year. What else do we have for our culture? I, I'm, I'm, um, I'm not blanking you out, but you know. You, oh yeah, you yeah. guys don't uh, bring your shoes inside, or you do? Uh, no, we don't. But that's just that depends on the family. Oh, okay. Yeah. Really. Uh, for for more of our heritage, <laughs> right? Uh, we had we were once. We had a little dynasty right here mm -hmm. called the Yuan Dynasty. So people took their name Yuan. That's how you see a lot of people named Yuan. Yuan, yeah. Yeah, they they try to do it to respect their you know leaders and stuff like that. Okay. Well, well, the thing is Vietnam is divided into two regions. You have the well, actually three actually: the north, south, and the middle. Okay. In the middle, right? Hue was usually was the imperial capital when we were. Which we, we just talked a, about yesterday. Yeah, when we had the kings and stuff like that. <laughs> then it was abolished. Then we have a different type of government now. You have the north and the south. My dad, he was more of uh, the northern part of Vietnam, right? His dialect is a little more thicker, the country. Okay. Right. And my mom, she was near the south, near oh, wow. Saigon, Ho Chi Minh City, right? One of the biggest city of Vietnam, right? And she's more of a city girl. Okay. So they met in America and they married. And. Weirdly, weirdly enough, right? Even though I was born in America, right? Uh huh. I have a country accent when I talk Vietnamese. And I, I think it has something to do with how your parents talk to but you. But my when mom you were is, a kid. but mom is city though. Her her voice, her accent is not that thick. Maybe you. And doesn't have those really harsh dialects. You know, some words they pronounce so heavily. Uh huh. And my mom was like, "You were born in America, and I raised you." And why do you sound like your dad? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, why do I have a country accent? I was like, I don't know. Well, I just do. Which of your parents do you talk uh, more? My mom. Talk with more, I mean. My mom. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, my dad. Yeah. So my mom said, when my dad, they first met my dad, right? His country accent was so desirable, it was so thick that she couldn't understand him at all. Really? Even yeah. though they're speaking the same language? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, there's, uh -huh. there's different dialects in the Philippines where sometimes it's, you can discern some certain words, but it's just like, what are you saying? That's true. That's right? true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they have different dialects for that. It was like, my dad was like in the village. She lived in the village and stuff like that. He would like go to the forest and get some food, harvest some stuff like that. My mom lived in the city. So it's like a nice mix of both uh agricultural and more modern stuff mm -hmm. uh, another culture is uh, well the thing is I guess my brother they went to Vietnam except for me right because I was here doing school uh 
There's a lot of motorcycles. I don't know if there's a lot of motorcycles in your place too. Yeah, I feel like uh, the traffic not, not is as great. much. I would not say. Yeah. Uh, uh, what other things I can say? A lot of vibrant colors. Yeah, it's kind of like red, red and yellow is like our color. Mm-hmm. What other stuff we have? We have a lot of mythologies about. Well, you guys do forest, That's forest right. sprites, dragons, and stuff like that. Uh, See the thing is, I didn't research this because I just want to try to remember. It. Oh, it's it's better, yeah. I know because yeah, I mean, it's my culture. For other countries, I well, you know, research it. But I'm trying to figure out what's. And my even though you were is. born here, uh, since you have, yeah, I mean, your parents are uh, from Vietnam, right? Um, right. They would be able to uh, pass some of the cultures and uh, and then uh, what? Oh, or, or the cultural uh, factors to you, or to to you and your brothers, you know, while growing up. That's just how it is. It's not like, oh yeah, we're in America now. We we shouldn't be doing this. No, and absolutely. That. Yeah, you know, Vietnamese culture has always been a household. It just yeah, it it kind of like I don't want to say clash, but it kind of meld together with American culture mm-hmm. that I was born in. So I know we're talking about Vietnam, but just a little bit to share the Philippines. You know, uh, we like one of our cultures is to never, not never, but uh, as much as you can, don't put your shoes inside the house. You have to like, kind of like a Japanese thing. I try to respect the household, right? Where you, yeah, I just said Same. thing. <laughs> Japanese thing where uh, you kind of leave your shoes. I know, sorry. Uh, either outside or on the entrance. Yeah, entrance. And then you just get it and all. But of course, uh, if we have a guest, uh, we don't, you know, just like, hey, leave your shoes over there. Um, they can bring the shoes. We're, we're more lenient when mm. when it comes to guests. Yeah, for know? the guests because they don't know. Right? Exactly. Yeah. So mm-hmm. you're respective of other people. It's our shoes. thing. Yeah, <laughs> it's our thing. So it's not like we're going to enforce it. But obviously, if the shoes are very dirty, then we're going to because we're living in a carpet apartment. Yeah. But I think most of the culture that <clears throat> you guys are aware of is our food. The food. Yeah. yeah. Oh, our culture food. is like a bunch of a uh, French inspired too. Right? Yes, because uh-huh. we were a French colony, and there's a lot of stuff the, that's French. The fr- the the bread, baguette, yes, the baguette, and other more French cuisine too, a little more high class stuff too. Oh no, how? But yeah, uh, that's my culture. <laughs> I don't know awesome. much about it, but well, you don't I, have to share all of the parts of your culture, know. you know. But it is on my bucket list to visit my home country. Though. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, all right. So. Uh, since you said you have plans on visiting your country, right? So yes. out of the three categories, not categories, but division of the country, where, where, do, where are you going to go first? North, middle, or south? I want to go to the north. So the country? Because in like the countryside, country I want to visit, uh, I, like, I like visiting the nature more than a city. And I usually cap it off at I the think city. The north, yeah, northern part, I think that's where the Ha Long Bay is. Yeah, it is. is. Yeah, there you go. That's what I want to see. Oh, yeah, yeah there you that's go. That's what I want to see. Then I go, go back, destination. Then I go back to the city, then you know, go to the airport and fly home. Hmm, yeah. Okay. So I always, when I go to a country, I always visit the countryside first because that's where, that is the country. That is Vietnam. Yeah. That is this. I think you should country. be using the word province instead. We use province in Asian countries than uh, country, the word country. I think it's more of just a Western thing. More fancy things? No, just province. Hmm. Or nature. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like farms, trees, farms, grasslands, trees, nature, and, yeah. and stuff. Yeah. All right. So. Moving on to the stuff of the day, we have a theme like usual, and it's up to you guys and Jared to figure it out. So, plan of the day it is avocado. California is the theme. Very wrong. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> avocado. It's delicious. It's nutritious. In terms of nutrition, it is one of the best food items to get potassium. You know, every time I see avocado, it just gives me a smile, just because. You know, I realize like how a lot of people kind of stereotype, you know, the states, and every time they think of California, it's like, oh yeah, avocado. Oh. <laughs> it's like, hey, what? Too, <laughs> really? Hey, I, I, I'm pretty sure I would. I rather have avocado as my, you know, what I people identify me as. Yeah, I have avocado. Do you I have mean, avocado? avocado it's just, yeah, yeah. No, it just gives me a smile. Like when when they say California, California equals avocado. Like, yeah, but actually, <laughs> it's Mexico that produces most of the avocados. Exactly. So I think they produce like 30% of all the world's avocados. Or something mm-hmm. like that. A little bit more, I think. But the reason why I pick avocado, well, it is a good source of potassium. And okay. we need potassium in our bodies to function, monitor our, uh, our nerves, you know, our actions, action potential. That's a little bit more... Uh, advanced but we'll, we'll probably talk about it a little bit later in some class but avocado 
Well, do you like eating avocado? Yeah, but since yes. potassium is a very common uh, uh, element. A vitamin, yes. element, uh, mineral, mineral. There you go, mineral. Right. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of uh, fruits or veggies or root yes, crops that share it. Yeah, banana, for example, potato is another one. Yes. Uh, but what? But this is the most. What, what What do you think avocado? It, I mean, why do you think avocado is better than than those two? I mean, they have a. I would say they have a good. Well, it has a higher uh, daily value of potassium. That's that's why I chose it. Okay, it's with less starch, top. right, compared to potatoes. Yes, that too. There we go. Uh, that's good. It has some good, uh, you know, fats too and stuff like oh, that. Oh, good fats. And it tastes good too. You can't go wrong with avocado. It doesn't taste anything. Really? For me. Yeah. It's like buttery. Oh yeah, buttery. But that's not a flavor. It's you know, a you know, texture. I usually call it. I call it green butter. Oh, yeah, <laughs> because of the, the texture of it. But it's perfect for, uh, you know, if you add avocado on rich tasting food mm -hmm. to dilute it. Yes. You know, like burgers. Uh, that, that was just genius. Avocado on burgers? Wow. I know, you don't respect that too, but. No, yeah, because yeah, in yeah, our country, we make shakes oh, yeah, yeah. out of avocado. Uh, some avocados and some little bit of chocolate. Yeah, avocado yeah. chocolate, avocado milk. That's there how we avocado. eat avocado in our country. But you know the funny thing is, in Vietnamese, right? Avocado, we call it bu. And bu means butter too. Oh, well, I would guess, there you have it. There you go. All right. Moving on to animal of the day. Something related to avocado, let's see. A box jellyfish. <laughs> Wait, okay, okay. That's well, a whole three, eight, one, eighty turn. I'll let you explain why is this. So the box jellyfish, there? right? They're notorious for their little venom, the toxin, right? They sting you. It's not uh -huh. a toxin, it's a venom. You touch it, boom. You know what happens? You get paralyzed? No. The, your cells, right? Your cells are little stuff in your body that you made up. It will release a lot of potassium into the blood. Okay, and what happens if it releases a lot of potassium in your blood? So, a lot of potassium in your bloodstream causes uh, arrhythmia. Your heart will beat at a weird pace. Oh, what? And it causes, like, you know, and your muscle contracts at a weird rate, too. Because potassium is like kind of like a... When you say weird, did you mean like randomly fast and slow? Yes, um, A yes, mix of them? Yes. What? Yeah. You don't it, want it, that. It, it, it do, 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 yes, do, do, it causes your do, muscles do, to do, contract do, do. and flex at a weird pace. No rhythm, do, no rhythm. You can't control it too. Uh-oh. So what happened is this, uh, this, um, what do you call it? This uh, medical illness. It's not an illness. What's the term for it? This ailment, there we go. Ailment. This, this oh, okay, ailment okay. is called hyperkalemia. Hyper means a lot. Emia means in your bloodstream, and kal, oh, no. K L E means potassium. Okay. So potassium in ancient Greek, I think in Greek it was called kalium. Okay. So kalium is uh, potassium. And when you look on the atomic table, uh, not atomic table, the periodic yeah, table, K. it's the letter K for potassium. Cause like when I was teaching you guys a uh, periodic table, right? It's usually the element and its symbol is usually the first two letters of the atom. Mm -hmm. But for potassium, people, you guys probably thought it was like should be like PO, cause potassium, right? But no, it's K because the ancient name, the old name was kalium. Okay. So hyperkalemia means there's a lot of potassium in the blood. So what happened is this toxin that the jellyfish has in his little tentacle thingies. Is it tentacles? Strings? No, nah, tentacles. Yeah. So if it happens, right, your cells will be will open up holes and release all the potassium out. Potassium but, leaks into the blood. But that means those tentacles has to puncture your skin. It doesn't need to puncture, it just needs to go through the skin. If it goes oh, if it goes through your cells, okay. it, it goes to your other cells and just boom. Uh -oh. this your your skin is a cell too. Oh, okay. Everything's a, it's got skin cells, your hair cells, everything has cells. Uh, these guys are very dangerous and they're usually found in the tropical in Indo, like India Pacific Ocean, but they can be found near uh, California, some parts of California and Hawaii. So mm -hmm. be wary of the box jellyfish. And you probably ask me, why is it called a box jellyfish? Why well, you look at the little it kind of looks like a box. It's, it has a little bit more corners than uh, round than being yeah. a regular jellyfish, right? Yeah. So, but if you ask me, I'm just gonna call it a cup jellyfish. It watch out for these guys. A cup or a bowl. I've got one. When did they look? A little bit upside down. Yeah. Kind, kind of looks, looks like, like a, a bowl. bowl. A yeah. Bowl. <laughs> uh, I don't know when, what time, but when they, uh, like, you know, it's mating season for them. There's a lot of them in the ocean. You guys gotta step out. Be careful. I think that's a good thing. That means you'll you'll be able to see them. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, oh, absolutely, you can see them. Because they're kind of like transparent, well, is, so just one you single can see, one. You, you can, can see the box it. part, the box part of his body. But, but not the tentacles. Yeah, the tentacles. Right. Moving on, we have Iron of Day and we have Banana. <laughs> yeah, Potassium. Ah! Right there. <laughs> In 1966, it was created by the artist Andy Warhol. What is that red thing that's kind of hiding? It's maybe like the banana is like split open and it's just colored differently. So oh. Andy, Andy Warhol, he's known as a pop culture artist. Oh yeah, and, and that's his style right there. That's his style. And this banana was also on the cover of Love Underground and Nico's uh, album cover. Okay. So the album was released a year later and they used this picture as a cover for the album art. Mm. And to this day, some people say, what is more famous, the painting itself or because it was used by the artist? The, the oh. musician. Wow, it's kind of like that, the paradox thing. It's kind of like the chicken egg. Thing. Yeah, uh-huh. But why did I choose banana? Potassium. Potassium. Yeah. All right. Moving on to science fact of the day, we have the Rochelle Oh, I'm surprised salt. it's not potassium. Okay. There is potassium. Well, yeah, there is. But... Well, the thing is, it is called, we, we know as Roche, uh, Rochelle's salt, right? But it's called, also known as potassium, sodium, tartrate, tetrahydrate. Tetra, tetrahydrate, you see or hear tetra means four, mm -hmm. and hydrate means you know, to hydrate. How, what do you do to hydrate yourself? Water. Water. You so there's four water. water. You see there's four water to the right side of the chemical? Uh-huh. Right. That's kind of funny because when you say hydrate, right, you said water, but hydrate kind of uh, sounds closer to hydrogen, which is a gas. But again, water has hydrogen. It's hydration, though. Yeah. Yeah. Hydrate, hydration. Uh, if you want, add hydrogen, right? Just hydrogen is called hydrogenation. So it's a different word. Hydrogenation, hydrogenation. Mm. But you just want to add water, you hydrate it. You hydrate yourself with water. Water, yeah. Right. So mm. why are we talking about this? Well, it has a potassium and it's a double salt. Why double is it salt. why is it double salt? Well, one side it has potassium, the other side it has NA. What's NA? Salt. Sodium. Yeah, there we go. Very good. So it was first prepared in 1675 in a apothecary. Apothecary is kinda of like a kind of like a pharmacy back then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. In France, but in the region called uh, La Rochelle, so that's where I got it from, Rochelle salt. Mm. And medically, we use it as a uh, laxative. Oh, okay. Right, right, right. Uh, another thing that I want to talk about, it has this quality, because it's a salt, you know when you look at salt, it's kind of like a crystal, right? So one, this unique quality that it has, it has this piezoelectricity in it. So piezoelectricity is when you apply enough heat and pressure to these little gemstones, this little crystal, right? It can generate a little bit of uh, electricity. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So you can use it as a battery then. Yeah, some people did use it as batteries. So basically, you, you press it really hard, apply a lot here, yeah. you see a little electricity in it. It's pretty cool. That's cool. Uh, people use it with quartz too. Quartz is kind of like a crystal too. Okay. They, you know, they put a lot of pressure and heat, boom, you see a little electricity, piezo electricity. So that's Rochelle Sharp salt. <clears throat> it has potassium in it. So a word of the day, you probably know the theme already, right? Potassium. Potassium. So another disease that we're going to talk about is hypokalemia. So when we talk about the jellyfish, how the venom, right? Not the venom, the toxin causes hyper. So that's a lot of, mm -hmm. a lot of potassium in the so blood, So hypo right? is the opposite. Hypo means under, so a low amount of potassium in your blood. Mm -hmm. So it's a noun meaning deficiency in potassium in the bloodstream. So let's break it down. Hypo means under. Kalemia. Well, kale. Kale is the uh, potassium. Because it came from the word kalium. And then emia. Emia is in the blood. Mm -hmm. So, you know, probably know another disease called anemia. Anemia, yeah. anything with A means without. So, anemia means your low blood. And then leukemia. Leukemia. Uh, is leukemia, Lu leuco means white. And emia means blood. So, you have a little bit of white blood cell in your body. So, it's a cancer of the bone marrow and white blood cell. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's very dangerous. So anytime we see the word emia, E-M-I-A, right? It is relating to the blood. So I forgot to spell it for you guys. There's H-Y-P-O-K-A-L-E-M-I-A, -E hypokalemia. So when we have a hyper, we probably have a hypo. Hyper means a lot, hypo means a little. Emia I mean, Yeah, I don't think it's probably. I think it goes both ways all the time. Well, the thing is I always want to protect myself. 
Oh. You can't say anything with 100% certainty. Oh, that's true, huh? Because in the future, but, it might change. Yeah, that's true. But but so far, uh, yes. as, as, as we know now, yes. there's always going to be a hyper and a hypo on Very, some kind yeah. of uh, ailment. Yes. So like like hypothermia, mm -hmm. what's hypothermia? That's That usually hi occurs when you're in the cold. Mm -hmm. And hyperthermia means... In the heat. In the heat. Yeah, so it's a little rule and there's there's always something that can break oh well all right what about this there's hypertension right yes is there also a hypotension yes oh there you go so yeah as of now yeah, they usually follow the rules yeah they generally mm -hmm. follow the rules but yes uh how do you combat hypokalemia well eat a lot of food with uh, potassium and what are the two foods that we talk about that have potassium today? we got avocado, avocado we got banana something bananas. extra uh potatoes you know so. um what else i think like crops like root crops, they, they're pretty much high in uh, yeah. potassium. You, would you say carrots also has some level of potassium, even though it's not as much? I'm not too sure, so I can't confirm that. But okay. I think it has a little, uh, trace amount. Yeah, little potatoes, about. sweet potatoes. It, uh, it yeah. depends it's on just the starch. The, the soil too. Oh yeah, the soil, the, yeah. Uh, the soil can enrich the vegetables. Mm -hmm. So, uh, is, when we think about potassium, you think about it, it's very important, but it is important regulating how the cell function how it communicates and how it functions, right? And use potassium and Oh, sodium. I have another question about potassium. Yes. Does it help you prevent cramps? Yes, that's what it is. Mm, so okay. potassium helps you uh, tell the muscle to move. Okay, so that means mustard has potassium in it. <laughs> because I, I remember when I was having cramps, when, when I was doing uh, the obstacle course race, uh, Yes, I had okay. to take a packet okay. of it. I understand, yes. So it does? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to do a little quick uh, thing. It's called sodium potassium channels. They're basically like uh, toll, gra toll gates in your uh, your cells. Okay. Your, the sodium goes in. If it goes <clears throat> in, the potassium go out. If the potassium goes in, sodium goes out. So it's like a, it's like a cue system. Okay. So that movement tell, uh, is basically how the cell functions. Wow. So you know, like when you look at a computer, right? What's moving through the circuit board? The electricity. Oh, okay, I was going to say the data, but yeah, it's electricity. electricity. Yeah. So the same thing with our cells too. We have this little movement of ions, the sodium and potassium ions. It's kind of like electricity. It's wow. running through it. It's organically. Yeah. So that's how our muscle contract. It's uh, our pumps in our body, the channels of sodium and potassium that's going through these cells and telling, hey, contract, beat. Your heart is actually contracting too, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's very important to maintain <clears throat> our levels of potassium, but not too much. Everything's in moderation. You don't want to be hypo, you don't want to be hyper, you just want to just, be... Like we always uh, advise everyone, moderation, moderation is balance. Key. All right. So yes, today's theme is potassium. You guys are great. I don't know, I should say that because I have to go eat my bananas you. now. But thank you, Jared, for joining me. And hey, see you guys next Monday. And enjoy your weekend or whenever you watch this and the rest of your day. Bye. Bye, guys.